a good purpose today, a noble purpose, and I think the best purpose that we can set aside on a Sunday morning is to come into the presence of the Lord and to begin to lift him up and worship him. Amen. According to his excellent greatness, which means you're never going to praise too much. You're never going to give him enough worship and glory in this place. Amen. Because his greatness is unsearchable. Why don't you just right now lift your hands up and lift your voices with us. Just praise him for a moment here. God, we love you and we honor you. We worship you today. And we thank you, God, that we have this opportunity to come together, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of every song today that we'll sing and so much more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy of our best effort today to give glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 It's so good to see everyone in the worship service this morning. I do want to mention very quickly a couple of things here. Uh, this coming Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m. in Veterans Park is our recovery rally for the community wellness event. If you're willing to volunteer before, during, or after the event, we're asking that you attend the special meeting following the worship service today. So make sure that we are well organized and ready to go come Saturday morning. And if it's okay with Brother Reagan, we'll meet in the youth room uh, next door. Okay. $275 in donations toward that effort. Also, next Sunday, following our 10 a.m. classes, we'll be having another summer revival service. This will be with special ministry guests Floyd and Cassie Morello from Scott City. Invite a friend and come expecting God to move. But I hope you came today expecting God to move. Amen. Let's get behind Sister Stephanie. And she's going to come and get us in prayer. This place is going to lead us into worship today. Let's believe God for great things. Praise God, everybody. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, this world is a very scary, crazy place. But with the, God has not given us a spirit of fear to be scared of that. He's given us power over the craziness that people try to say to us and of love that we can show people when, like as I taught my students students today, that people are going to try to tear you down and tell you that, oh, God's not real. You don't, you don't have to spend your time at church, but he has given us a spirit of love to recuperate and say, well, I'm going to pray for you. And of a sound mind, so we don't have to be worried in the night of what's going to happen the next day, because we know that God's going to be there for us and help us help just through those situations. So today I just want to pray that we let the spirit of fear leave and that God's spirit would be in here and in this place and with us today.
take care of that too. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to take our needs before him right now. We have many needs on the screen. We need to remember our recovery and wellness community event coming up this Saturday. We need to remember my Aunt Arlene. She is still struggling with fluid in her lungs. They've taken her off the vent, put her back on it at least twice. So continue to remember that specific need today for her. Donald Lopez is in a coma and he needs a miracle. Doug Jordan is recovering from his surgery still. He needs the Lord to just continue to touch his body. We need to remember Doug, Seabog, uh, Gary Shepard. Um, he needs his lungs to be healed. We need to remember Sister Beulah today. We need to continue to remember her. She needs healing and she needs a safer environment. We need to remember this specifically. Pray for that to be able to happen. We need to remember Anthony Siffer. He is, um, he's doing really good as far as I can tell, but he does need to be able to swallow better. That's the one, I think, thing that the hurdle that he still needs to jump. But God has done so many things for him already. And so I believe that he can take care of this too. And I know you believe it. We need to continue to remember Melissa and Darla who are having um, chemo. And they need the Lord to strengthen their bodies and get them through that. We need to continue to remember our prodigals, the ones in this area all around. I know there are many. And we need an outpouring of the Spirit of God. Yes. And aren't you thankful for Brother Leo getting the Holy Ghost? I know you're going to the Lord for that, but that's awesome. And we're just worshiping God for that still. We need to continue to remember our community because if he can do it for Brother Leo, he can do it for anybody else too. Yes. And there are so many people out there who need the Holy Ghost, but they need a beginning. They need a start. So let's pray for those people today and let's yes. remember ourselves that we would be unified as a church body to be able to get to that mission and do that mission that God has set us yes. forth in this city, in this community. Yes, amen. And if you have a need today that you want to come up and you want the ministry to lay hands on you, then I believe the power of God is in this room. And if you have a need that you need pray for, God's going to move on your need today. If you have the faith to step out and have somebody to pray for you. Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have a need that you don't want to mention, if you are at your seat, you can just raise your hand right there where you're at. God yes. is in this room. He's everywhere. Yes. And he wants to move in your life today. There's a reason why you're here today. Yes. And God wants to work in your life. Let's take uh, our needs before Sister him. Jennifer, yes. Just before you pray, um, I know others are coming to get prayer. Star, could you share that praise report about Melissa? Yeah. We received this week. Okay, so we've been praying for Melissa. She's been on chemo. And um, on Monday this last week, she has been so full of faith about her healing. And I told the progress reports along the way that she had had the cancer had shrunk 80%. She had told me over and over again, I can feel the prayers of the people. I can feel something happening. And so on Monday, they did ultrasounds. And there is no cancer, and they can't even find it.
Your spirit will be poured out in this room, God. And, and therefore, God, that it will be poured out beyond the walls of this building today, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray right now, Lord, for your will to happen in every single person's heart today. God, I pray that no one would leave here the way that they came in, Jesus.
why don't we just linger in his presence for a few moments? He's so worthy. His spirit is here today. Oh, cover us, oh Lord. Cover us, oh God. Oh, Jesus, we magnify your name. Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Jesus, we love you, oh God. We love you, oh Lord. His presence is here and so real. So real. Sweet, sweet presence. I believe God is not done yet. God wants to fulfill his word your life today. Hallelujah. Have your Bibles. I'm going to be reading Deuteronomy chapter number 7. Read a few verses there. Is anybody excited about what God is doing in the kingdom? part of the kingdom of God. So if he's doing it for you, he is doing it for his kingdom. So we can celebrate that. We are a part of something much bigger than ourselves. Deuteronomy chapter number 7, verse number 1 says this. It says, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hast cast out many nations the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Rizites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. You ever felt that way? Every direction something is stronger than you are, staring you down. Verse 3 says, And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. And thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not give unto his son, and his daughter shall not take upon thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall you deal with them. He shall destroy their altars and break down their images, cut down their roofs, and, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor chose you because you were more in number than any people. You are the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, because the Lord loved you, because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse number nine. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. It's unending. It, it didn't stop back then. I got news for you, it didn't stop with a mother or a grandmother. It didn't stop. It's not stopping with you. It is unto even a thousand generations. Put your Bibles down. I believe God is wanting to speak to us for a few moments this morning about his promises. Oh, God, let's go to heaven and pray right now that he'll speak to us. Lord, we love you. We praise you, O oh Lord. Oh, 
We magnify your holy name. Lord, your presence is here and your word is real. It, it is sharper than any two-edged sword, God, and we pray right now that it would cut to our hearts. Lord, that we would be transformed by your word this morning, God. That we would be moved that you would take us to a deeper level in you, oh God. Oh, how we love you, Jesus. Anoint us, oh Lord. Anoint our ears. Anoint our hearts, oh God. Keep us, Lord. Keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Our scripture text is very promising. Filled it a fitting word for this day that although it might seem like the enemy is all around and even though at times it might seem like they are where we should be God's word is settled in heaven forever so he made a promise and he declared unto his people that promise this is your land and the enemy is your enemy. Amen. And I am going to fight this battle alongside you. He said, this land is for you. That is a promise. And as long as you love me, and as long as I am your God, it will be settled in heaven to a thousand generations. God has made us promises in this place. God has made us promises that we must remember. I feel that it is important today as we move into the next direction and the next phase in, of this church that God wants to speak to us and remind us that he has promised us some things. God has promised us this city. And God has promised you your family. And God has promised you your well-being and blessings. And it is time that you recognize and you cling to what God has promised you. It is time also, though, that we remind the devil that we are living under his promise. It was not a suggestion from God, but rather it is a command. It is an edict in heaven today. And so, I want you to realize that we are promised. And with that, we must remind the devil that there is no trespassing. I feel that it is important that we take back the ground that we have allowed the enemy to occupy for too long. We have allowed things to enter longer than they should have entered. We have allowed voices to override the promises that God has ordained. Is there anybody here today that can attest to the fact that God has made you promises for your family? And can anybody attest to the fact that God has made you promises for your own well-being? Maybe it is your health. Maybe it is your finances. Maybe it is just peace of mind. But God has promised you something. Can anybody attest that God has made promises for this city, for this hour, and for this moment? I believe God has promised us some things, and it is time that we reestablish where those boundaries are. That we get back to a place where we don't pick and choose what we feel like is the better ground to hold on to and allow the enemy to keep something over there. If God promised you everything, you better take everything. You better take everything. Can I tell you today and in this moment that God is a God who is faithful. He is a faithful God. His word is unwavering. His 
word is also yea and amen. amen. It is established. Yes. Yes, now see, when we establish something here on earth, it can be revoked, it can be altered, it can be changed. But when God establishes something, you and I are no longer players in what God has done. God oversees and he supersedes what we do. He says, I am promising and I am fulfilling. But I realize that we are flesh by birth. And sometimes you and I, maybe not you, maybe just me, but we struggle with the timeline that God works on. Recognizing God's time is not our time. But you see, we are always ready for the end play. Show us the final score, God. When in reality, sometimes, Brother Robert, we're still in that first quarter. <laughs> and... and, and we get a one-point lead, and, and we say, well, that's good enough, but God's looking to blow it out. Right. And sometimes we will minimize what God actually desires because we are content with just enough. Oh, We're content with the boundary being just outside the gate. But God, God wants to establish something much greater. No, we struggle with that. We are always ready just to, to be at the end. We love our family, and when God promised you that you, you have kids that will return to Him, it's easy for us to say, I'm ready for the end. I'm ready for it to be finalized, God. There's nothing wrong with praying that, but You've got to trust what God is doing. Yes. And you've got to trust how God is working. Yes. Exodus chapter 25 says this. It says, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water. And he will take away sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. In the number of thy days, he said, he would fulfill said, I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. That's a promise. That is a settled promise. He continues in verse number 28 and says, I will send hornets before thee and I will drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before thee. That's a promise from God that he will fulfill. We read that and we get excited because we know what God did then. God can do now. However, when we continue to read, verse 29 says, However, I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate. And the beast of the field multiply against thee. But verse 30 says this. It says, by little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. God said, it might not have happened when you thought it should happen. But I had ordained the plan from the get-go. That if I follow, how I will follow. It won't be just getting rid of one enemy. But I will prevent a new enemy from coming into the field and trying to destroy the work that I am doing. He said, but if you'll just be patient, and if you'll just hold on, little by little, I will start to weed out the enemy. I will send the hornets towards those that come after thee, and I will increase you. I will multiply you. He said, and you will inherit the land. 
Oh, we must know and we must ask ourselves the question then, what must we do? I'm here today to tell you from the authority of the word of God that we are simply to stand firm and we might as well go ahead and plant a no trespassing sign at the border. Because it is time that we realize that this is what God has given to his people. It is time that somebody throws up a no trespassing sign at the city line. It's time that somebody throws up a no trespassing sign at their driveway. You want to stop letting the enemy get to the, your door to knock on it. You want to stop them before they even enter your property. And I'm tired of just praying, Lord, you see the church. But it's time we start praying, Lord, you see the city border. Lord, you see the county border. You see the territory that you have promised. And we declare today that we are standing firm. And it is time that we enforce what God. Know somebody. They had some property. It was a car property. Sell it. And they had to get it surveyed. They had to get the property surveyed. They own part of it. Somebody else that they knew very well owned another part of it. And they were going to sell their part. So, in order to sell it, one of the requirements was the land has to be surveyed. So, they went through the process, they got it surveyed. And one day they just said, after the survey was done, they said, well, that property line isn't even where I thought it was. I thought it was here, and that's where we stopped farming. And, and they were over here farming. He said, but the property line's not here. The property line's over here, and they've been farming on my property. You know what they said? They said, they're going to be real disappointed now. Because the line is established. Right. <laughs> and what they might have been taking from me without me realizing it, they won't be able to take from them because the border is established. Right. And maybe, just maybe, there are some people that you know and we thought, well, you know what? Maybe they're not really part of what God has for us. Because our border's over here. But God is saying, I am going beyond that. You might have thought the border ended right here, but really the border is way over here. And you need to go ahead and expand and say you cannot take. I have given. Somebody needs to know today. There is a boundary, there's a border, and it has expanded. And God is saying, you need to throw up a no trespassing sign because it's time that you take back what I have given you. It is time that you reestablish the boundaries that I have provided. Amen. Hebrews. Talk a little bit about what we should do. We've been promised. What should we do? God. Hebrews 10 says, Therefore, brethren, have boldness. Yeah. You know, I, I was reading this, and I, and I just spent time with God. He said, brethren, have boldness. God spoke to me and he said, there is a voice of timidness. And somebody needs to just set out a no trespassing right. sign to it. That thought doesn't need to enter into your brain anymore. It doesn't need to enter into your mindset anymore. Because God is declaring it's time to be bold. He said, having boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. It's 
time that we realize that which comes against us, that which attacks us, that which oppresses us, no trespassing. The weapon that was formed, the Bible says, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. It's time we realize this is a no trespassing zone and the enemy's not welcome in the boundaries that God has established. He said, so let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sheep. Lo, children are heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now listen to what God says. God says, through his inspiration to the psalmist, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Verse 5 says, Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of milk. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I want you to notice something. He says, they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. He said, you want to be locked and loaded. And you need to prepare your kids to be locked and loaded. Because when you are, the enemy's going to stop at the gate and say, Hey, can I talk to you for just one moment? It reminded me as I read this. One day we were doing some outreach and I just wanted to turn around. And we went down the road and I was like, Well, I need to go back the other way. They had this big tree to look at, and on it was a sign said, no trespassing, beware of dogs. <laughs> and I thought, well, I, I'm just turning around. I think this will be okay. So I just kind of eased in the driveway. It was a long driveway. You could see their trail, but I wasn't going up to the house. I just pulled right in the driveway. No sooner than I got in the driveway, the door flew open and out ran three or four of the most vicious chihuahuas you would have ever seen. <laughs> and they made a mad dash for the car. Now, thankfully for me, I was just turning around at the end of the driveway. But I can be assured that those chihuahuas had been trained a little bit. You know, when somebody pulls up, you go attack. Because when the sign says no trespassing, the sign means no trespassing. And I think it's time that we just stand as firm. It don't matter where they pull into the driveway. We need to ensure that they see the sign that says no trespassing. I think 
think it's time that they see the door sling open. And once you've got this, most vicious makes its way out. Because we ought not wait until it's knocking at the door. But we ought to meet them at the gate. But here's the deal. Your quiver's not full. If you're not locked and loaded, and if your kids aren't locked and loaded, you run the risk that some things might come on through the door. Maybe, maybe that old no trespassing sign has been laying in a drawer for a little while. It's not worth it. It wasn't worth it. It was an argument that I got tired of having, so I just set it in a drawer for a little bit. I'll pull it out later. I'll get it out in the future. I'm not getting rid of it. I didn't throw it in the trash. It's not ripped. It's not torn. I'm just, I'm just setting it to the side for a little bit. I'm here today to tell you it's time to put the sign back out. It's time to reestablish your home as a house for the Lord. Yeah. It is time that you decide on this day who you and your house will serve. Irrelevant of the current situation. Irrelevant of how it currently is. Doesn't matter if it looks like there is no hope left. You need to put out the no trespassing sign for the enemy to see. Yeah. Story in the Bible, accounts in the Bible, if you will, it's a true story, everything is true. The little story that the little lost. I know it well. My great grandmother used to read it all the time. It was her testimony. In 2 Samuel 21. There was a lady, and her name was Rispa. She was the daughter of Ai, and she had some sons, and the enemy killed her sons. She hung, they hung them from a tree. This was, this was her testimony. You know, she, lost, she lost some boys when they were young, and, and, and so she, she could relate to this story of loss from this lady. But not only that, she had she had some kids that that had that were not in truth, and, and she held true that God was a God of faith. And so the Bible says that she took sackcloth and she spread it for herself on the rock. And from the beginning of harvest until the late rains poured on them from heaven, she did not allow the birds of the air to rest on them by day, nor the beast of the field by night. I'm telling you right now, it might seem hopeless in some situations. But what God has given you, don't give up on now. Don't abandon them because it looks like they are too far dead. And David, the king, was told what Rispa, the daughter of Ai, the concubine of Saul, had done. Listen to what transpires because of Rispa. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 21, verse 12, that when David had found out, he went and he took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the men of Jabesh Gilead, who had stolen them from the street of Beth Shon where the Philistines had hung them up after the Philistines had struck down Saul in Gilboa. And so he brought up the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from there. And they gathered the bones of those who had been hanged. And verse 14 says, they buried the bones of Saul and Jonathan and his, his son in the country of Benjamin and Zelah in the tomb of Kish his father. So they performed all that the king commanded. 
But listen to what happens. It says that after that, God heeded the prayer for the land. God heeded their prayer for their land and reestablished the boundaries. But it was because risk was set. I'm not giving up on my kids. I'm not taking down that no trespassing sign. If I gotta beat a bird, I'll beat a bird. If I gotta beat a beast, I will beat a beast. But those are my kids and I'm not giving up on them yet. It's time that we reestablish where the boundary is. It is time that we reestablish what God has promised us. And it is time that we realize that God is going to fulfill his promises. Romans says, talks about a promise, a promise to Abraham. He would be a father of many nations. His seed would be greater than the grain of sand on the sea or the stars in the sky. When you read it in, in Romans, the New Testament, the, underneath that new covenant, under, under which grace has been dispensed, we read that for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void promise made no effect, and the law brings about wrath. For there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of nations in the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of the nation according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old, or the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. It was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but listen, but also for us. It shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead and was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our Justification. Abraham had a promise, but it was not just for Abraham. It was for every generation. Even unto us. But can I tell you today, there's got to be a no trespassing sign somewhere. There's got to be a no trespassing sign put up somewhere. You've got to get the enemy out of your camp. Because they are not there to have a nice conversation and to talk nice and ease and to help you grow your field and to help you bring in the harvest. They're there for destruction. That's why Jesus said, the thief cometh but to kill and to steal and to destroy. And so it's time that 
we grab hold of the promise. The garden border. It is time that we grab hold of the border. And we guard the promise. Not just for us. Maybe it is for your children. They are a heritage of the Lord. They are a reward, but you've got to guard them. But maybe, maybe it's for your friends. Maybe it is for your coworkers. Maybe it is for your neighbor. several years ago something that I've experienced and, and, and I felt that God was in it in church two days later word tongues interpretation went forth and God spoke in that moment I'm going to retell the story because there's many here that don't know and, and, and maybe you heard it then you were here then but you don't remember it, but I just want to reestablish it today in closing. There were several years ago, my wife was working at the school up here. I was just going to go up there. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to go. And I don't remember if I was riding the bike or if I was, I was walking. It was dark. We lived here. I don't, I'm not afraid of Mexico. Conscientious, but I'm not, not really afraid. I don't, it can be pitch black. I don't mind to go outside. There's no fear there necessarily. But I was, I was going to see her, going up there to check on her, see how much longer she was going to be in the classroom. And as I was going, I felt, I felt like I was being watched. And, and I was, I began to look, and there was evil that God had opened my eyes to see in that moment. I promise I'm not crazy. Not happened since, but I, I can just see evil staring me down in that moment. And for a split second, I was fearful, Brother Steve. I was fearful in that moment because it was staring me down. I thought, I don't have anything to be afraid of because greater is he that's in me than that. But God opened my eyes to what was actually transpiring in this city that I couldn't see because I serve a living God and he goes with me where I go right. and I'm protected and I am, I am covered by him. Right. So I, I go, I'm not afraid, but, I, but, but God began to open my eyes in that moment. I came to church that following Sunday. I don't know if I was preaching about the lead service. I don't know what it was exactly, but I remember I told the story and the Holy Ghost began to just fall. And there was a tongues and interpretation that day. And God declared, I am shutting up the borders of your city. Right. And I am establishing this city. And I tell you today, God's promise is not void in that. And it wasn't that a couple years later it expired. There was no expiration date on that. But I will tell you, somewhere along the line, I just kind of took down that no trespassing sign from my head. And I said, God's going to do what God's going to do. But when was the last time I guarded the city? When was the last time that I actually went to prayer in spiritual warfare against evil? 
When was the last time that I said, God, this is the boundary that you've established and I am enlisted in your army. Use me for your will. When was the last time that I actually engaged in what God wants me to be engaged in instead of just coming to church and filling his presence and doing the work here? I realize it's easy. It is so easy to get caught up in the work for the Lord that you forget to do the work of the Lord. But today I'm just here to reestablish that there's no trespassing in God's promise. I believe this week that God is going to open doors. God is going to provide encounters. This weekend we're going to have this event and God is going to make divine interactions transpire. But if I'm just there to do a little work for God, we will say hello and we will say goodbye. I think God wants to establish. I think God wants to expand some boundaries. I think God wants that no trespassing sign to be a little further out. I think God wants to let some people know this is his city. And evil is not allowed. I think, I think God wants some people to know that this is not a place to be oppressed because God delivers. This is not a place to be bound because God breaks chains. This is not a place to be depressed or feel hopeless because he's a God of peace. And this is a peaceful kingdom. I'm going to open these altars. I just want us to find a place to pray. I want us to establish some no trespassing. I want us to establish some no trespassing lines in our life. Somebody needs to reestablish where that boundary is. Somebody needs to pray in the spirit for a little while. Somebody needs to allow God to move in them. You know what? Let's not even do it. I feel God.